Hello everybody and welcome back to Vibrant Performance TV. My name is Kyle and today we are continuing off with my 1987 Mazda RX-7 build. If you didn't catch the first episode, be sure to go back and watch that one where we gave a nice introduction to the build and gave you an idea of some of the goals and uh, the game plan of how we're gonna tackle it. And in today's episode, we're gonna be actually starting the CAD design. So you're gonna wanna stick around and check that one out. So before we start the actual CAD work, as promised, we have a color reveal for you guys. So for those that are wondering, uh, this car was painted Audi Glacier White. Uh, it's like a metallic kind of chalk white. I really like it. At some point, I'm gonna paint the entire car this color. I held off on that for now because I think at some point I'm gonna do a wide body and, and a whole lot of other stuff to the body. So for now, the engine bay is fine. But since the car has come back, we've been pretty hard at work. We've painted the subframe, the sway bar, I also lied in the previous clip that, that I wasn't gonna <laughs> take the body harness out and, and, and the dash and the HVAC. Uh, I decided to take that stuff out because when I was looking at the, the engine bay, I didn't like seeing the, the old HVAC um, heater core and AC line sticking out. Figured I might as well. Um, art might have influenced that a little bit. So <laughs> we pulled the dash out, we pulled all the HVAC out. Then we ended up taking out the body harness what I'm gonna do there is, I've, I've already started, I, I de-loomed it, I cut out all the connectors that I didn't want. Since I'm running a Haltech, I don't need, for instance, ignition coil wires in my body harness. So, took all that stuff out. That's still a work in progress that we'll see at a later point. Uh, we're gonna be using some vibrant loom for that, so that's gonna be pretty cool. But for now, yeah, we just wanted to give you a, an update, check you in with what's going on, and yeah. All right, welcome to my desk. Uh, let's talk about some CAD design. So you guys might be wondering, why am I even in CAD? Uh, so I myself am not much of a fabricator, I'm, I'm learning. We're actually gonna be bringing in a fabricator from California to work on my car, Tanner Goki from Goki's Garage. You guys should definitely check him out on Instagram. He did some amazing work. Uh, so yeah, he's coming in from California to Toronto to work on my car. He's only gonna be here for a week. We're gonna be on a really tight deadline, so me working in CAD, it's gonna be great for us to communicate ideas. I could design something, send it to him, show it to him. Uh, and then we, we could get a, a better idea of the scope of this project and how we're gonna actually do all this stuff. I also just wanted to touch on the approach that we're gonna be taking in CAD. Taking on a project like this, there's really two main ways that you could go about it. One is you could be super exact down to the millimeter and uh, essentially design things for production. Doing it that way is really cool because say you're making a turbo manifold, you could actually 3D print cut fixtures so that everything lines up exactly as you designed. For me, uh, this is my first time taking a crack at something like this, like I said, so I'm gonna take a different approach. I'm gonna be using CAD more so just to figure out space constraints, get an idea of my build envelope, you know, maybe use it for some simple mounting stuff, but overall, I just want to get a general layout down um, to help make the design go a bit smoother. And lastly, to be honest, I really just wanted to challenge myself. I've never taken on a CAD project of this scale, like a, a turbo build or anything like that before. So I really just wanted to see what it's like. You know, working here at Vibrant has exposed me to a lot of really cool fabricators and designers. For instance, 3D Magic Mike, he did a lot of really cool work in our catalog. Um, so yeah, basically I, I really just wanted to challenge myself and see what it's like. All right, so it's getting late in the day. Uh, I'm just gonna finish up a few last minute things on this design. And tomorrow we're actually gonna be hopping on a call with Tanner so that he could get a first look at my initial design and we could bounce some ideas back and forth. So stay tuned for that. So it's the next day and Tanner and I hopped on a video call. We'll spare you the two hour conversation we had, but we went over a lot of different ideas and specifics of the design. 
Even after the phone call, him and I bounced some ideas around over Instagram. I actually even mocked up some parts in the bay to show him and give him a feel of how things fit together. In the end, this is the design that we came up with. So let's get started with the turbo manifold. It was partially modeled based on some examples that I had seen online. I'm going to turn the mesh on here. So now you can see what it looks like in the engine bay. Uh, this is the 3D scan file. It's kind of hard to kind of look at. Uh, it's just due to the software that we use here. Uh, it's an attachment to SolidWorks called DesignWorks. But what you can see here is that I went with kind of a lower turbo placement with the turbo kind of set further back. This was just so that I didn't put a lot of leverage on the manifold. The turbo is gonna be unsupported. Uh, at least currently that's what my plan is. It, I'm not gonna be using any sort of bracing. So I'm also using 321 stainless steel. So due to all of that, I just didn't wanna put a lot of leverage on the turbo and create a big moment arm. So I felt that that placement worked pretty nicely. So I did attempt to try and make the T4 flange here somewhat flat. That would just be to assist with installation so I could maybe put some studs and just drop the turbo onto it. However, it was a bit of a challenge with um, the clearance that I had, especially to the frame rail here. You can see right there. And then as well as with the intake manifold, um, trying to keep good clearance with the turbine housing and uh, the top of the, the manifold right here. Um, but I did, I did get a pretty decent angle. I should be able to put some, some studs on one end and, and just drop it on. So I will be honest, I did make one mistake when I got this uh, turbo scanned. As you can see, I have the wastegate placed down here, but the actual bracket to hold it is up here. Uh, honestly, when I got it scanned, I wasn't really thinking. I didn't orient the compressor housing and the wastegate to the correct manner, so now the bracket is off. However, I'll be honest, I am thinking of changing the stock wastegate um, to an aftermarket one anyways. So I'm guessing I should be able to order uh, like a different arm that will allow me to place this wastegate in a different location. And hopefully that'll help with the clearance to the frame rail. Um, I guess I'm kind of taking, taking a bit of a gamble here because I don't have those parts um, to actually check fitment, but I'm, I'm kind of assuming it should work. Uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> now jumping into the actual V-mount system, as you can see, we got the vibrant intercooler here with the sheet metal end tanks that are sized appropriately for that core. If we look here, we got the new pinless HD clamps. I'm pretty stoked about those. We have two and a half here on the inlet and outlet of the intercooler and two inch right off of the turbo compressor housing. Uh, the turbo compressor housing is also using a cast 90 degree elbow here and to bump up from the two to two and a half inch we're using one of our transition adapters. Tanner and I also came up with this pretty cool v-mount crossbar setup that goes from frame rail to frame rail. It has a nice dimple plate on top to tie it all together. Um, as you can see here we used uh, actually Tanner sells these these mounting tabs here and they come with these nice vibration isolators here so this should be a nice and secure way of, of holding the intercooler and radiator to get together. Uh, I really like it because it's simple and easy, clean. I was originally coming up with a lot of complex methods to try and hold these together in a uh, way that's kind of quick release, but ultimately easy and simple prevailed. And honestly, this is gonna be easy to install as well. Uh, What's gonna be cool, and I guess you'll see it once we actually build it, is these tabs are gonna have a bolt going through here, and as you install it, we'll be able to pitch and angle the radiator and intercooler just to achieve the, the angle that we want, and then we could set it. So that's gonna be pretty sweet. What's nice about a V-mount intercooler setup is that the charger tubing becomes super simple. In a traditional front mount intercooler setup, obviously you're gonna have the intercooler at the front of the vehicle in, in the front bumper cutout. And you're gonna have to come up with some sort of complex tube path to get to the intercooler and then from the intercooler to the throttle body. But yeah, the V-mount super simple and clean because uh, as you can see here on the hot side of the intercooler, I have this pretty short, simple run from the turbo to the intercooler. Of course, using the two inch HD and then the two and a half inch HD on this side. 
On the cold side of the intercooler, I got the two and a half inch HD, a pretty straight run directly to the throttle body. Um, this is just a throttle body adapter piece from Gretti that I've been hanging on to for a while and I had 3D scanned. Uh, we're using the two and a half inch HD here, of course. Um, I did put a slight bend in this tube. It's pretty much just for an aesthetic appeal here. I didn't want to have just a straight tube run in there. I thought it would kind of look weird. So we'll, we'll come up with some sort of bend to put in it just again, so to break it up. Um, and then, yeah, the last thing I wanted to touch on here was just the uh, tight radius CLR bend that I used. Um, let me turn the mesh on. So as you can see here, things get pretty tight, especially to the brake booster and master cylinder area, as well as the oil filter. Um, if I had used one of our kind of normal CLR bends, the, the, the regular bend, not tight radius, um, it would have kind of shot this tube out a little further. I would have ran into a lot of clearance issues and kind of hit stuff over here. So um, the tight radius CLR bend there kind of made things a breeze, uh, really, and lined me straight in straight up into the intercooler here so that worked out pretty great there so yeah that's it for the CAD design uh, I'm pretty happy with how it came out I think it's pretty cool um, like I did say previously I don't want to be super rigid with the design I do want Tanner to have the ability to make changes while he's here just in case he sees that like hey if we do something a different way it might be easier to install or fabricate whatever it might be but overall Pretty stoked on the design. I'm sure him and I are gonna come up with something really cool. I'm excited to see how it turns out. But for now, let's actually just jump back over to the engine in the car and get those back together. All right, so we just finished the CAD work and before this engine goes back into the bay, I just wanted to give it a quick refresh. Uh, you know, redo the intake manifold paint. I did just find a coolant leak that had prevented me from going to the track with the guys here actually. It's a pretty simple one. It's just a, a vacuum cap for the, for the heater core. I had plugged it up poorly. Um, I do have a nice solution for that, which we'll see in a future video. But um, yeah, for now, we're just gonna gut this down to the short block, clean everything up so that it looks fresh in the new bay. So today's finally the day. We're putting the engine and the transmission back in the car, uh, waiting for this day for a while. I enlisted the help of Manit, our graphic designer. Right now, we're just gonna hand bomb this thing. I think, I think both of us could probably do that without the crane, so let's give it a shot. Last night, uh, Manit and I finished putting the engine in. Uh, we finished like around nine, it was kind of late. Um, also, I, I don't know, I didn't give Manit a proper shout out, I guess. Um, Manit's got a pretty sick 22B rep. Like a car. Yeah, 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 you should check him out on Instagram. Um, pretty sweet car. Yeah, so right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna mock up some stuff for, for Tanner. He wanted to see some placement of stuff like the intercooler and the radiator in the car just so he could kind of visualize what's going on. Um, so for the time being, I put the intake manifold back on. Um, I, I just kind of cleaned it up for the sake of fabrication. I, I was getting sick of looking at the rising sun. Um, it actually looked pretty sick when I first did it. Yeah, so I, I cleaned it up. Uh, I also took a lot of this red off from the engine block. Um, don't go too close, because it's not the greatest job, but um, it works. 
so yeah, for now, um, we're gonna mock up some stuff. I even uh, 3D printed this in, uh, exhaust manifold that I had designed in CAD, uh, just to get some placement of like the turbo and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so let's get to it. Okay, so we just finished fitting everything up, mocking it up, uh, just so that Tanner could get a, a visualization of how everything actually fits in the bay. Everything's not in the exact spot. Like for instance, this intercooler, it's probably gonna have to come up and in a bit more. The radiator might go down and uh, we might put a little bit more angle in it. Um, but we get a good idea of how things fit now, uh, where we're close. Uh, for instance, with the turbo, we threw the turbo on the 3D printed uh, manifold here. That was a little sketchy because uh, I didn't print it solid and I, I kind of screwed up on the print, but it's holding it. Uh, we're kind of close right here. I had seen that in the CAD, but now seeing it in real life, it's, it's a little closer than I thought it would be. And there's going to be a block off plate here too, so it's going to be a little tight. The turbo might have to come out a bit more. Um, but no, uh, everything's looking really good. I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, finally getting to see a nice turbo in my car. It's a nice feeling. So um, yeah, I guess that's it for mock-up now. I'm, I'm going to take some pictures and send it over to Tanner. All right, guys, so that's a wrap on this episode. As you can see, we threw the engine back in the car and we are done with all the CAD work. So be sure to tune in to the next episode where we're going to start throwing all of this stuff into the car with the help of Tanner from Goki's Garage. Uh, as you can see, we got some vibrant 321 stainless steel, a uh, power steering pump, Borg Warner EFR turbo, vibrant intercooler and end tanks, um, a mix of some silicone, some aluminum, new HD clamps, 13B flange, vibrant air filter. We got some goodies from Turbo Smart, internal wastegate fuel pressure regulator, radiator, vibrant catch can, two catch cans. <laughs> and that's it. Comment down below. Let me know what you think about the design that we chose. Um, and yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.